and I'm sure with the inflation you mentioned before, there were deals where they just didn't get a chance to bring rents to market and, 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 you know, future buyers could take advantage of that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, What are you seeing today in terms of the business plan buyers are coming in with? Is there any popular business plan at this time? Like uh, for example, if we looked at the last 10 years, we're talking maybe buying C-class product, renovating it, like, Mm -hmm. like what we were just talking about. But is there any, trend that you're seeing in the market today where you have a lot of buyers coming in and saying, hey, we're, we're going to buy this deal because we could do X, Y, and Z, or we think X, Y, and Z is going to happen. So I've seen this, what we call a flight to quality. So the groups that maybe used to buy 70s built assets, and I realized I didn't answer your question before on the expenses, groups back then weren't, no, no one saw the inflationary period that we're still seeing when it comes to expenses. And Definitely nobody saw, at least in our industry, the insurance increase. It's crazy how you talk to some owners that had 300 to 400 a door last year in insurance, and now in 2024, that's doubling to 400, I'm sorry, to 800 a door. So nobody saw that coming. And I think in, in the market that we were in, in 21, a lot of the risks get overlooked. It's again, hindsight's always 2020. And it's really easy to focus on the positives of multifamily. And again, we're still really strong fundamentally in this asset class. It's the debt that has just changed everything. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. So it sounds like today, most of your buyers are looking for quality. Um, And a part of that is probably because your expenses are your expenses, whether your rent's a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks. So, so that gives them a little more uh, cushion to absorb some of those expenses. Would that be accurate to say? Absolutely. And then <clears throat> one thing too that is causing this, it's well, now people are more cognizant of these expenses. Like I said, in a, in an accelerating market, a lot of these issues get overlooked. The cost of repairs in older buildings get overlooked because you can focus. The focus is so much on the interiors and the upside and what they're able to do. Well, now, because there's no lender that's giving on uh, credit for that upside, it's Fannie and Freddie, which is, again, we're very fortunate to have that. That's really funding 65 to 70 percent of these transactions. Groups are more cognizant and aware of the costs of these older buildings. And not only that, but the costs are much higher than they were two years ago. So because of that, groups have shifted that focus that historically were buying 60s, 70s built product to, well, now we're gonna look at more 90s, early 2000s. We still want that upside. We still want the potential to increase rents based on renovations, but we're gonna get away from some of that older product. Now that's not everyone, but you you do hear it um, a lot more frequently than you did back in 21. Were there any big themes at NMHC? I think you attended. Um, mm-hmm. were, there, were there any big themes just industry-wide coming out of there? It was, it's kind of funny. It's kind of like uh, the game telephone. So people start to talk, they have a few meetings, and then it seems like the message is pretty consistent after that. Okay. And it seems like the message was, there's very little inventory on market. We've got a lot of capital that we want to place. A lot of deals don't make sense. Going back to your question on the seller, buyer, bid, ask, there still is a gap because rates have just moved so quickly and they're moving quicker than expectations. And that's not with every seller, but a lot of the times it's really hard to look and say, this asset was a five cap 12 months ago, I guess 18 months ago. Now it's a six. It's tough to absorb that. And Cap rates are moving just as interest rates move. Um, but to your question on NMHC, it, it was a lot of capital still out there, but I think it's being patient. And a lot of it too is really hope, I don't wanna say hoping for distress, but watching for distressed assets, for those assets that were purchased with three-year bridge money in primary markets. A lot of those deals that were bought, whether it was 80s, 90s, or early 2000s built were bought with short-term debt. Now, capital is on the sidelines waiting to see if anything comes available to purchase uh, 
a quality asset in a primary market for less than what it was purchased for before. 